Hello and welcome aboard to this week's In Orbit, your weekly news station dedicated to all things space. Be sure to follow us to keep up to date with the latest news orbiting around the globe. Our first story for today, a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft with four astronauts on board successfully docked with the International Space Station November 16th, the day after launch on the first operational commercial crew mission. The spacecraft named Resilience docked with the station's No-2 or Harmony module at 11.01 p.m. Eastern Time. Hatches separating the station and spacecraft were scheduled to open two hours later. Spacecraft performed well other than some minor problems, such as heaters in a propellant line for one of the set of Draco thrusters, were not working after the spacecraft reached orbit. After changing some limits that NASA officials said were initially set tightly, the heaters started working. The spacecraft, with NASA astronauts Mike Hopkins, Vic Glover, Shannon Walker, and JAXA astronaut Sochi Nokuchi on board, launched November 15th from the Kennedy Space Center on the Crew-1 mission. Docking took place approximately 27 and a half hours after liftoff from Launch Complex 39A. Crew 1 marks the beginning of operational flights to and from the ISS on commercial crew vehicles. Spacecraft will remain docked to the station for six months, with the four astronauts returning home shortly after the launch of the Crew 2 mission on another Crew Dragon spacecraft next spring. Up next, the Department of Air Force announced on November 19th it had selected six military bases as candidate locations for the U.S. Space Command Headquarters. Six finalists are Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado, Kirkland Air Force Base, New Mexico, Patrick Air Force Base, Florida, Redstone Army Airfield, Alabama, Joint Base San Antonio, Texas, and Outfield Air Force Base, Nebraska. The announcement follows an Air Force decision on May 15th launch an open bidding process to select the permanent location of the U.S. Space Command Headquarters. The Air Force said it expects to select the location in early 2021, but it may take up to six years to build new facilities. During that time, U.S. Space Command will remain at its provisional headquarters at Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado. Future headquarters will have approximately 1,400 military and civilian personnel working there. While the new list represents bases in six states, a previous effort in 2019 only included installations from three states, Alabama, California, and Colorado. Following media leaks of the 2019 list, politicians from Florida, Texas, and other states claimed the process was unfair and demanded that their states be considered. Next up. The U.S. Space Force expects to clear SpaceX to use previously flown boosters for all national security missions. So far, the Space Force only has agreed to allow reused boosters in two GPS launches scheduled in 2021, but the plan is to make the entire fleet reusable by 2022. Over the next 18 months, we'll complete the transition to a fully reusable SpaceX fleet for our national security missions, Colonel Robert Bongolvi director of the Space and Missile Systems Center Launch Enterprise said November 19th. The Falcon 9 rockets that launched two military GPS satellites June 30th and November 5th both had brand new boosters which the company recovered after launch. After renegotiating its contract with Space Force, SpaceX will use the recovered boosters from the June and November launches to fly two more GPS satellites in 2021. The Space Force transition to a reusable fleet is significant because up until now, SpaceX was required to fly brand new boosters for national security missions. The company routinely recovers and reuses rocket hardware in its commercial and NASA launches. But the Space Force needed time to figure out a process to certify previously flown boosters. Bongoivi said the Space Force launch enterprise lays stringent, mission-assured requirements on launch providers to minimize the risk of losing expensive payloads in failed launches. He said the SpaceX Falcon fleet has improved its process and increased its reliability. Our final story for today. Rocket Lab launched its Electron rocket November 19th, placing nearly 30 small sets in orbit while making its first attempt to recover the rocket's first stage. 
The Electron lifted off from the Rocket Lab's Launch Complex 1 on Mahai Peninsula, New Zealand, at 9.20 p.m. Eastern on a mission called Return to Sender by the company. The rocket's kick stage deployed its payload of 29 small sets into a 500-kilometer sun-synchronous orbit about an hour after liftoff. Of greater interest to many, though, in the effort by Rocket Lab to recover the rocket's first stage, the company announced November 5th it would attempt to re-enter the stage, deploy a drogue and main parachute, and then splash the stage down in the Pacific Ocean, about 400 kilometers downrange from the launch site. This is an all-combined test, a conclusion of the number of tests that we've been doing, Peter Beck, chief executive of Rocket Lab, said in a briefing to announce its plans to attempt the recovery of the stage. Initial indications were that the recovery demonstration went as expected, with the stage surviving re-entry and deploying the drogue and main parachutes, Rocket Lab announced. Beck later tweeted a photo of the stage floating in the water next to a recovery boat, apparently intact and in good condition. Also, a little gnome named Chongxi was sent into space with the launch of this rocket. The gnome comes from the game studio Valve and was part of a charity event to fund children's hospitals. And that concludes all the latest earth-shattering news for this week. Follow us to keep up to date with more exciting stories. Also, follow us on our other social media to support the content we make. Stay safe and see you in orbit.